Amy and Farrell have known each other since childhood and have been competitive with each other since then. It starts when Farrell crashes his car, trying to avoid a turtle on the road. He eventually gets his car totaled and his father refuses to give him another. Amy gets to school on her scooter, gifted by her father. She complains to her best friend, Emerson about how her father misunderstood her wanting something small and supportive. She hoped that he would give her a car and further complains to her best friend about it. Emerson tells her not to worry and tries to make her feel better that the scooter matches her eyes. Pharaoh complains to his best friend, Zing, about his lack of a car. He says that it is a right for all students to have cars. He vandalizes Amy's student president campaign flyers by drawing on them. Amy sees it and confronts him for being unruly. He is running against her for president. They have a showdown. She complains that he could be arrested for the act, and he says that it is a beautification act he is doing while in school. They are informed of an opportunity to win a new car. Big Jim, owner of an automobile show announces that he is doing his competition. He says that the team who can stay in the car the longest can win a car. Teenagers rush at the opportunity to be chosen amongst the contestants. Amy and Farrell are presenting at the election campaign. Farrell promises to eliminate nuclear weapons from the world and schools. He would stop Ivory from coming into the school. The students are very pleased with his presentation as they clap and holler. Amy starts her presentation by saying that his promises are impossible. While she gives her presentation, a boy interrupts that Big Jim is announcing the contestants of the competition. Twins, Maya and Mia, Eminem, release the contestants. The first is a hypersportsman who is a snowboarder, Clyde Kobar, and the second is a self-obsessed social media influencer, Sophie Jackson, who is particular about her appearance and social media presence. Contestant 3 is Gaming King 4.0 who plans to take his virtual girlfriend to prom in the car. The fourth contestant is Geeky and Genius, Lala Zizisks who is the opposite of the typical nerd, and she is very serious about her life and her achievements. The fifth contestant is a fifth-year senior named Colby Mann who is a football genius. The sixth contestant is Community Helper, Chris Goodman who helps the environment to do better and volunteers at the old people's home. The last contestant is Rapping Cat, who is a disguise of a young musical genius boy, Jerome. The last contestant is a surprise. The twins arrive at the school and announce that it is Farrell. Amy is disappointed. On the day of the contest, everyone is present there. Farrell and Zing show up, preparing. Colby is also present as he is preparing with his supportive cheerleaders. He and Lala go head to head, talking about life. Jerome is confused about how people want to see the dancing cat and not him. He says that there is a crazy cat lady that always follows him everywhere because she is addicted to him. Chris approaches Farrell to wish him good luck. He says that others deserve to win. He extols the prize car. Farrell imagines driving the car with the blonde by his side. He comes back from his reverie when Amy calls him a loser. She was chosen for the contest last minute as a substitute. Gaming King 4.0 left the competition because he didn't know he would have to leave the house for the competition. Farrell is upset to see her. The contestants say the reason why they want the car. Colby wants to win a car to score girls. Sophie wants to win the car to help her social media engagement. Clyde wants to win the car so that he can drive his motorcycle over it. Amy is confused about how no one wants to have a car just to have a car. Farrell complains that Amy's dad is rich so he can buy a new car, and Chris says that riches don't matter. Farrell makes fun of him that he wants to use the car to take out community members. Chris says that he wants the car to sell, so that he could pay for a kidney transplant before it's too late. They are sympathetic towards him until he breaks into a smile, laughing. He wants to give the car to a janitor who walks long miles to go to prison. The contest starts as the twins introduce each contestant. Big Jim shows up with his right-hand man, the mascot which is a dog. He tells that one of them will take the car home and reads the legal binding which says that the standoff could lead to swelling or death. The rules of the game are that they can have a 10-minute break to do whatever they want, but they have to be close to the car on time. And also, when they hear the three buzzing sounds, someone has been disqualified. They are not allowed to lift their hand over the car, except if they are on the break. They are not allowed to sit but only stand. They are also obliged to switch on others who fail the rules. The countdown starts and they begin the contest. Emerson has set up a tent for Amy and also Zing. During the competition, Colby starts to cough, and people begin to wonder what's wrong with him. He eventually falls to the floor and the buzzer sounds, stating that he has been disqualified. The contest is still on. Lala asks Sophie if she ever does anything without posting it, and Sophie asks that if she didn't, did it happen? In the car, Farrell and Amy play rock, paper, scissors. He begins to talk about their history of how they compete. She stole his crown for the pageant and she talks about the time he joked with the girl's scout to see whether she could sell more cookies than him. In ninth grade, he complains about how the competition was fixed for her to win. She says that he didn't know his vowels. He calls her saucy and throws in her face that she failed PE. They bicker while the buzzer sounds and the others leave for their break. Amy walks into the tent and complains to Emerson about him being infuriating. Farrell complains to his best friend about her being self-centered. Emerson has the opinion that Farrell is attractive, and Amy lies that it isn't true. They all devise a plan to take each other out. Zing says the way to her woman is her heart, and Emerson says the way to a man is his stomach. They both decide to do something. 
He is late while returning to the car from break time. While the countdown is going on, he rushes to the car. He gets too close to Amy when he arrives at the car. It's been seven hours. Sophie updates her social media followers about the competition. Jerem asks if she wants to be known as an internet sensation, and Sophie says that everyone wants to be known. Lala disagrees and says that she doesn't care about being noticed. Sophie says that she does. That's why she gets into a competition. She says that everyone wants that. They agree that Amy and Farrell only compete because they want to stay relevant to each other. Back at the tent, Emerson commences the plan. She starts up a conversation with Zing about them still having a relationship despite their best friend's rivalry. They have a conversation. She gives him a brownie and he loves it. She offers to make one for Farrell. She tells Farrell to get more chocolate chips. While he leaves, she puts laxatives in his brownie mixture. Jack, a high school heartthrob comes over to them and gives Amy a rose, and he asks her out to prom. She agrees to that. He tries to trick her to leave, but she says the prom is in five months. He breaks up the plan by messing up. Amy figures out Farrell's plan and calls him out on being devious. The buzzer sounds, and people leave for the break. She throws the rose at him and leaves. Farrell is upset with Jack for messing up the plan and says he told her to take her out on a date, not prom. He gives Jack the money he owes him for his service. While in the bathroom, Lala and Sophie speak about beauty. Sophie says Lala could be prettier if she wanted to be. She says that she is afraid of the attention. Lala contradicts that she doesn't need to be pretty, she's smart. Sophie promises to give her a makeover. Zing gives Farrell the brownie which he loves. Emerson applauds him for giving it. Lala walks out, looking different from her usual nerdy self. Unknown to her, the time has been set. The buzzer sounds, indicating that she has been disqualified. She blames Sophie for changing the time on her phone and says that she thought they were friends for a minute. She leaves the place after swearing to avenge her disqualification. Farrell feels discomfort and wants to use the restroom. While Zing goes to Emerson and reveals that he once had a crush on her. He says because of the best friend rivalry, he never got to do anything. He gives her the flowers that Farrell gives her. Sophie says that the winners should win based on popularity, not endurance. They say the cat person should win because he is the most popular, but she complains that the cat has followers. Farrell is still in discomfort. Amy talks about him wrecking his car that he once had. He isn't supposed to be here. He asks for a break and is still in discomfort. When the buzzer sounds, he leaves for the restroom. There is a line in the restroom as Farrell is still having his crisis. The snowboarder, Clyde, leaves to find somewhere else to use the restroom. He finds a place and someone locks him in. Zing and Emerson are bonding and begin to make out. Amy finds them and complains, but they don't mind her. Back from the break, Farrell complains that Amy is behind his problems with the brownies. The buzzer sounds, and they all put their hands on the car. Clyde is disqualified when he doesn't show up. They all bond while the competition goes on. They dance, order pizza, and are happy. Jim says that they won't last long. Jerome is tormented about the large cat moving around the parking lot. He seems to be the only one seeing the cat. While they extol the dancing cat's talent, he gets upset and says that he is the one who sings. The buzzer sounds and they are away from each other. Farrell catches Zing with Emerson when he steps out of her cave. Zing lies that he was birdwatching. Farrell, just like Amy, complains that he is fraternizing with the enemy. Zing unusually says that he has feelings for Emerson. He says he wants to court her. Farrell is disappointed in him for being with the wrong choice. Back from the contest break, Sophie complains that she is running out of angles for the video and asks Jerome how the dancing cat always looks good. He refuses to talk about it. She continues to talk about him. Jerome gets upset and talks about the cat not doing anything. He says the cat is not good or real. He jokes about how the dancing cat was a mistake, and he didn't know 33 million people would watch the video. He says that he is the talented one. They tell him to show them his talent. They begin to psych him up and he starts to dance. In the process, he lets his hand off the car. The buzzer sounds, and he has been disqualified. The cat lady gives him a stuffed animal for the cat, and he takes it and walks away dejectedly. Back in the tent, both Zing and Emerson are snuggled up in the tent. He says that she reminds him of his mom. She is disappointed and grossed out as he compares her to his mom. She kicks him out. In the dressing room, Sophie worries about misplacing her makeup bag, and Amy tries to make her feel better, but she kicks her out. Clyde is still trying to escape. It's been 31 hours. Lala shows up to ruin Sophie. She takes an unflattering picture of Sophie and wants to post it. While fighting, Sophie takes her hand off and loses the competition. Lala leaves after she had her revenge. Back in the toilet, Clyde is losing his mind and is delirious about the hours he had spent there. Amy is talking to the dog about not letting people walk over her. She thanks him for listening to her. The three of them are still standing in the contest. During break, Chris approaches Amy to talk about Farrell. He says that he has a way to kick him off the competition. He says that they could lie that they saw Farrell lift his hand off the car. When she refuses to, he says that he didn't have a problem when she asked to do the same to Amy. She is disappointed. Chris tries to convince her to put him off the game. They are back in the car. He talks about the spelling bee and how he lost. 
Chris announces that he saw him lift his hand. Jim says that two people have to see. Amy is put in a tricky position. She confirms that it never happened. Chris cries that they are conspiring against him and tries to prove that he is the good guy by stating all his volunteer works. Clyde shows up covered up in the dirt. He says that he climbed down the sewer to escape. He explains that Chris locked him up, and he tries to say that he didn't know anything about it. He changed the time off Lala's phone, took Sophie's makeup bag, and took Jerome's headphones. He is a fraud as he lies about everything he does. His father was never a war veteran and works in a bar. Farrell says the only reason Chris works at the old people's home it's because he is addicted to prune juice. He denies it, and Clyde takes his water bottle and drinks out of it. In the process to take the bottle from him, he lifts his hand off the car. He is disqualified. Zing tries to apologize to Emerson for being a creep, and they make up. Amy and Farrell talk. She thanks him for defending her with Chris. He says being a jerk to him is her thing. She confides in him that her family can't afford to give her one. Her father was fired, and her mother is getting a divorce. He tells her that everyone goes through those things and tells a secret of his own, saying that Sophie was right. He wants to compete with her because he wants her to notice him. They both bond while in the car. The next morning comes, and they are still in the car, playing and talking. He says he hacked into the school system to change her grade and make everything better for her. She seems very impressed. He imagines both of them running through the grass and playing. Jim breaks up the reverie and says that there is no winner, and he thanks them by giving them peerings for a prize. They both castigate him for being a crook, and Jim throws their mistakes in their face and says that they have to work hard for it. He tries to leave, and Farrell says that Amy won. They both try to say both won. Jim says that he was waiting for that and they were competing with each other. The twins announce what happens to the losers. Lala gave in to peer pressure. Clyde ends up in the hospital after attempting to jump over 53 cars with his motorcycle. Jerome won a record deal. Sophie hasn't tweeted since everything. It was a tie and both won. They both drive out of the place. In the car, they speak and argue about kissing. He eventually kisses her. While they drive, they see Chris. The movie ends with both arguing and driving off.